what you're looking at is the documentation for Android's path class. To understand how the finger painting is going to work on our paint pot project, understanding how this class works is paramount. I would encourage you at this point to stop this video and to have a good look at the documentation surrounding this path variable. What the path variable does basically is it stores a bunch of XY coordinates that can be used to trace a particular path. You can store straight lines, you can store arcs, you can also store circles. Now this is a simple path. Let's look at a more complex path like this. It is important to understand that what you're looking at here can be stored in a single path object it does not require four path objects. Trying to understand why this can be is going to be important for our app. Recall that a path is a sequence of X and Y coordinates with arcs and lines. So we can see that we can continue from here to here and then we can continue from here to here with another arc. Then we simply take our pencil and move it off the paper to draw the next polygon. And so therefore we can store all of this information in a single path object. When we want to move the pen from one place to another without drawing, we use the move to command. And when we want to draw on the paper, we use the line to or arc to or circle commands. Since we're going to use path objects to draw our finger painting, let's now go ahead and create some state variables. Okay, so now I have one object that's going to keep track of the path and the other is going to keep track of the paint or the color that we're going to use uh, to draw the path. We're going to initialize these uh, objects uh, in our initialization method. Okay, so I've created a new path object, I've created a new paint object, and I've set the color of the paint. In this app, we're going to let our users use their fingers to do the finger painting. So we're going to have to handle touch events. And the way we do that is we're going to take our class, which is the view class, and we're going to say implements on touch listener. And we're going to create a new on touch listener that's going to allow us to handle three types of touch events when the user puts uh, her finger down on the canvas, when the user draws on the canvas by moving the finger or when the user lifts the finger up. This on touch method is the one that's going to get called every time the user touches the screen but we have to remember to register the on touch listener and the best place to do that is in the initialization method. And what I'm doing here is I'm saying that the current object is going to have its on touch listener registered to the current object. That means that the object will handle its own touch events. In our app, we're going to constantly uh, need to keep track of our X and Y coordinates. So we're going to create some coordinates and use these throughout our app. Now inside the onTouch method, we're going to write the case statement that's going to handle the different types of touch events. The code needed in the onTouch method is surprisingly small for handling a complex action like finger painting. Let's just go through it together. When we call this onTouch method every time the canvas has been touched, we are passed a motion event object. We can use that motion event object to figure out where the on the screen the user touched and we can store those in our uh, member variables x and y. I'm using this as a debugging method to figure out if the on touch event listener is working. And then inside the switch statement we're handling three types of actions. If we have the user touch the screen uh, and we basically just move to that location. If we have the user sliding the finger we're going to draw a line, add the new point uh, to the line uh, call in the existing path and then this action up we're not using it right now we're going to use this more when we need to draw the dots uh, for the circles uh, that'll be in the next tutorial this invalidate is going to force the canvas to get redrawn important uh, 
by default, you'll see that the onTouch method returns a false, but we need to return a true here because we're handling the touch events ourselves. Uh, if, you, if you put false here, your app will not work. Now, the last thing we need to do before we test the app is we need to create this onDraw method, and this is the part that actually does the drawing to the canvas. And after calling the super onDraw method, we simply call the canvas draw path method and draw the path using our paint object uh, to select the color. Let's now go ahead and run the um, emulator and see what we've got so far. Okay, we see that our picture has come up and now for the test we're going to uh, draw and we see that we are getting something but one thing we forgot to do is we forgot to turn the fill off on our paint object and so it is creating polygons instead of lines. Let's go back and quickly do that. By setting the style to stroke instead of fill, which is the default, we should get the desired effect. Let's run it again. And this time we can see that it is working. The next thing we're going to do is add some code so that we can change the color and also to change the line thickness. We've written some of this code already, but we need to modify our paint object so that it can incorporate these new attributes. Because we're going to have to make uh, so many changes to our paint object, I'm going to isolate all those changes into a separate method. So when we first start up and we initialize our paint object, we want to make sure that we set the size, the line width using this uh, set stroke width method. And likewise, each time we change the pen color, we want to make sure that we tie the pen color to the paint object. Let's uh, run the app again and see if these changes take effect. Okay, we see our app has crashed and this would be a good time now to discuss how to debug. You're going to have to step through in situations like this and try and figure out what happened. For this particular case, it's fairly obvious that when we tried to set the paint color uh, on this object, this object had not yet been created. We can tell that by looking at the Android monitor. and scrolling up and seeing that we got a null object reference and we got it inside this paint object and that was the clue that we had that we had failed to create the object before trying to set its color. In our initialization method we had failed to initialize the paint object. I've done that now by adding this line and now let's run the emulator again and see where we get. Okay, we are now getting the desired effect. Now we're going to try and test what happens when we increase the dot size and also when we change the colors. Let's first start by trying to switch the pen color to red. Well we see that our pen color has changed to red, but did you see what happened? All the old arcs that we had have also changed to red. Let's take a moment now and try and figure out what went wrong. Recall that when we designed our app, we designed it with a single paint object called mPaint. Also recall that these arcs and lines that you see on the screen consist of a single path object that we call mPath in our design. So what's happening is that when we switch the pen color, the next time the canvas is redrawn, that paint is used to color not only the new arc that's being drawn, but all the previous arcs that have been stored inside that path object. In the next tutorial, we're going to fix this problem by storing this diagram not in a single path object, 
but in an array list of paths. Likewise, we're going to associate a separate paint object for each of those path objects. That will give us a unique representation for each arc drawn on the screen.